Well, good afternoon and welcome, my dearest viewer. I'm so glad that you are joining me on this momentous occasion of, I think it's called Taste Toronto. So we're currently in the lobby of the esteemed James, not rather jo James Brown, no, George Brown University. This is their campus on the water at the bottom of Sherborne. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm meant to be filming, but if no one comes up and says, Hey man, hey man, can't you see this sign which says there's no cameras allowed, man? And by the way, you don't seem to have much respect for people's privacy to begin with, so I think you better be on your... And none of that's happening, so I think I should be okay. Now, this is a great concept right here. This is called looking at the world through rose-tinted windows, and right outside the rose-tinted windows is the beautiful ex-wife and my jeep or her jeep i have no one who paid for it obviously or paid it off but she's the one who's driving it um you know it's probably worth just taking a quick quick tour of this marvelous facility while i gather my thoughts vis-a-vis -vis the atheistic element so you know what i've been in discussions with folks on twitter and i really appreciate it if you've come to my channel and you've watched something and you know, you were nice and civil about it and all this kind of stuff. Um, there's so many people that come to my channel and it's funny, they say things like, well, religious people are narrow-minded and religious people are ignorant and religious people this and this and that and that. And then they end up displaying the worst kind of ignorance and the worst kind of manners and the worst kind of etiquette. And all the while, I sincerely am trying to befriend people by applying the Quranic principle of which basically means, isn't this gorgeous? These damn kids have no idea what they're uh, missing. When I was homeless, folks, seriously, when I was living in a homeless shelter, I'd come up here and this would be my little roost. First of all, I'd go down there and lie down on the beach or lie down on the grass on a bench somewhere down there and then sit on the edge of the water and watch airplanes landing at Porter. But right around the corner here, there used to be a couple of sofas right here at this spot. And it was an ideal spot because no one comes here. And I could warm up, like if my socks were wet, I could warm, up on the, um, warm them up on that heater. And right there, uh, you know electricity, you know, I used to say things like electricity is the new water because just going around town and looking for a place to drink is one thing looking for a place to um, Use the bathroom is another thing when you're homeless right because you get kicked out of your shelter at like 8 in the morning And you have to wander around all day until 430 doing God knows what and you go back for meal times But in any case these damn kids don't know how good they have it and by the way when I was in university I didn't know how good I had it either. So, going back to the atheistic thing. We're only, we're only at three minutes, folks, so I think I'm doing much better. So, just to recap the whole train of discussion. You know, I wanted to talk about spirituality today, and I'd love some feedback with regards to spirituality. Like Sam Harris, leading atheist of the day, he's written this um, book called Waking Up, and then he's got this thing that says, the subtitle is, spirituality without there's the wife element down there with the dog all the way over there so she wanted to come out and run around with the dog and our Jeep down there is kind of I'm, I'm keeping an eye on it right because I don't want uh, one of these uh, George Brown goons to come over and be like hey man can't you see it says no parking here anytime I'm making fun of these security guys because I am one of them right and it's like some of these guys take their job far too seriously. You know, you should take it serious. Yeah, said. You should be a professional. You should take it very serious. However, you should also understand your job is enforcing the rules, but at the same time, your job is customer service. You're the kind of person that should be approachable as a security guard and have people come up to you and say, hey, man, where can I do this or where can I do that and so on and so forth. So in any case, just to recap, I want to talk about spirituality. Sam Harris has written a book called Waking Up and then he says, spirituality without religion. You know, I'm 
thinking I should adopt that as a mode of discussion. I, I, first of all, I, I thought, okay, f I, I don't want to preach. People call me a preacher. Of course I throw in um, props for Islam from time to time just to level set and let people know where I'm coming from. But I'm not trying to convert the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal says in the Quran that if we had wanted to, we would have made every nation one nation. We'd have made you all one religion or one nation. But we wanted to try each group of people with, with whatever we gave them. And we gave each nation uh, rites and rituals and ways of commemorating uh, sa sacredness and, and, and things like that. And, and, and ways of worshipping God, essentially. So when natives do their thing, or when Buddhist people have their traditions, or you know, the real question that you, you should think about, it's not a valid scientific argument, but it is a valid argument, right? The whole thing with science is like, it gets caught up in saying, well, these are the rules, and, and you have to play by these rules, and if you don't, it's the same as religious people. You know what? There are arguments of the heart and there are arguments of the mind and you might say arguments of the heart are more important. That's the kind of thing I want to get into with spirituality. Like things like love and beauty and, and transient kind of ephemeral qualities. Not transient but you know qualities that are there as, as, a, as a race we believe in justice, we believe in honesty, we believe in beauty and virtue and nobility and honor and things like that and these are concepts that animals don't have like I get into discussions about the fact that A we're preeminent over animals and B we have a moral code now I'll go as far as to say now we have obviously spirituality now Sam Harris is talking about spirituality and I have a couple of uh, videos that a lot of people have unliked <laughs> saying you know their videos are like they're called uh, you know questions for Sam Harris and my main question is right now how can, how dare you talk about spirituality the word spirituality obviously intones spirit if you're talking about spirituality minus the spirit then you're not talking about spirituality but then spirit talking about spirit is the same thing as talking about God you see spirit is something that we feel most people feel that there's this thing called an eye. It's not the nails. It's not this lump of, of organic matter in my head called the brain. It's this, this awareness, right? And it seems to be disconnected from the body. So much so that there's a whole body of knowledge about OBEs, out-of-body experiences. So where does that come into the play in an atheistic mindset? Moreover, do we, as atheists, do you guys, you see, we, <laughs> as soon as you start associating, be careful of who you associate with, say, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, because you'll, you'll absorb their way of thinking without even realizing it. So do we now, if we're purely materialistic and purely based on evidence and purely empirical and all this kind of stuff, do we then discount things like love? Now, atheists will say, Oh no, you can measure love, you can measure emotions. I'm not talking about the stuff you can measure. I'm talking about the supreme ideal of love. The supreme ideal of beauty, which can never be attained, by the way. As everyone knows. Like, you can have excellence, but you can't have perfection, right? Perfection, the whole thing is that all of these things point towards something that's perfect, which is God. In any case, Mr. Harris, if you're out there, or if any of his faults are out there, if someone can explain to me, the whole thing of spirituality and then things like karmic law for example as atheists do you guys believe that what goes around comes around for example or you know um, things of that nature I don't know how long I should stay here my wife is uh, is waiting for me it's uh, already 3.30 my wife's waiting for me I might as well go out there and get some vintage footage of the beautiful dog so yeah I mean just to recap what I've been talking about so far. So the three questions, once again, everyone tells me they've been answered and no one can answer them for me. Where did everything come from? And then the only answer you'll have is, we don't know. Okay, that's fair enough. Where did everything come from? We don't know. But can we say something about the cause of the universe based on the universe itself? I, I get into trouble when I say something like the universe is ordered. You know, God forbid I say something like the universe exhibits uh, infinite wisdom and, and uh, intelligence. 
and our 61 peace be upon him asked one of the atheists of his time does it make sense to say that infinite intelligence and wisdom came into existence from non-existence it's such a profound question and people will will look at a tree or look at biology or look at cosmology look at all these so-called sciences of ours and and they won't realize the simple fact that there's beauty in this harmony and you know the the science that you worship is in fact the ultimate looking at the world through painted rose-colored eyes. See, the whole point of me uh, being in here, I wanted to point out earlier is that I see things through my tinted windows. And I'm not talking about the tinted windows of Islam. Just our perception is secondary. Whatever is out there, whatever is out there, like I'm touching this glass and it seems to me that there's something solid here. But no matter how hard I press it and what it feels like, it's just a chemical reaction in my brain. When I knock it on this thing, the sound that's created is just a chemical reaction in my brain. It could in fact be a matrix and I could just be a brain in the jar as I'd like to see. So we look at the world like as atheists, we're so caught up in, oh my God, I can't measure it. I can't uh, define it. If it's if if I can, if it's if if I can, if I can't measure it or understand it or define it, then it's not even worth uh, talking about. How presumptuous and how arrogant! Can anyone answer that one for me? Any case, the wife elements out there, and I bet you those people are. Oh no, they're not. I thought they were playing with the little terror of the east, the little dogling. Where is that little monster? It's around here. Oh, there she is. There she is over there. So, uh, believe it or not, our Jeep is still, uh, you know, working. And uh, we picked up a nice little uh, something or the other. See this, this, this bird poop on the back? That's called Nazar Vattu in Urdu. Nazar is evil eye. And so this thing repels the evil eye. So there's my racer and there's a really nice uh, shelf unit that we picked up for my the wife element, so I'm helping her take it back to her place and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah. Okay, so first of all, where did everything come from? And w the answer is we don't know, and then people go on to say we may never know. The real question is, is there a God? That's what I was thinking previously. Is there a God? This is the bench, one of the benches I used to come and lie on when I was homeless and I basically, hey, how you doing, man? I basically leave my shelter early in the morning because we need to get out at like 8 and then uh, get back in at 4. I'd come and hang out here and then if it was... How you doing? <laughs> if it was... Uh, cold. It's cold now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Bobby Oh. Yeah, I was up there this morning and I parked over by the cylinders. Oh, you got in trouble? You got ticketed? I don't know. Over there. Oh, those guys over there. That's Broadview and Danforth? No, that's the uh, Parliament and Lakeshore. Parliament and Lakeshore. Parking spot there. I parked there. Okay, and then you walked all the way here. Good for you. Well, you're getting out and about. You're such a nice, good-natured man. I mean, it's it's so nice to see people who actually get out and about and interact and enjoy the world. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, the guy with the red bandana. All right, thanks, guy. Have a great afternoon, sir. It was nice chatting with you. There's a oh dear, there's the guy with the red bandana, and he's crushing this fellow's beer cans. No idea what that's about, but there you go. Nice, friendly Torontonian. It's so nice to see. So, here comes the little dogling, and uh, the wife element is obviously in top form. One of the reasons. Katie, 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 Oh, no! 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 Oh, no! No, Katie! You little furball of divine proportions! How can you think that this beautiful little object is an accident or is a spontaneous something you know what okay to say okay I'll, I'll give it to you to say that the hair is you know maybe it wasn't designed or, or it could have been a reaction to the environment something somewhere was designed 
I believe that God creates according to evolution, but somewhere something happened that is beyond just randomness and chance. There's your mummy over there. Can you see her? Can you see mummy? There she is. There she is. Can you see her? Can you see her? Woof, woof. Catty, 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 cat call her, babe. Babe. What's his name? Catty, it's a her. Oh, sorry. No worries, no worries. It's not gonna get offended. <laughs> Katie or Catty. It's like a cat, right? <laughs> There you go. Anyway, I need to wrap this up. So, hey, where did everything come from? Uh, you know, I'm thinking now I should sidestep the, the question of God because the question of God becomes a question of a label. My God versus your God. And I think what's more important is a question of spirituality. Do you believe in honesty? Do you believe in being good? Do you believe in human compassion? If you do believe in those things, then be nice on my channel. Don't come and, and call me a raghead and, and a refugee and all this kind of rubbish, uh, you know, and, and then, you know, make like you're better than me for being nasty. Oh my God, where's mummy, huh? Anyway, I think I gotta go. So where did everything come from? Why is it so amazing? And you know what? Order does infer design. Somewhere something happened Prior to the existence of the universe, there were some laws that were set in place, there was some force. I get in trouble when I say things like everything has a purpose. What I mean is that these blue, this blue and white thing here has a purpose. Oh, they're garbage containers and the purpose was human purpose. Okay, so let's have a look down here. See that yellow thing, the buttercup? There's a reason it's yellow. And there's a reason that these stems are stuck up in the air like this, right? The reason that's yellow is so it attracts insects. The reason this is stuck up in the air is so that it gets sunlight and all this kind of stuff. The reason that these these leaves are flat and then the blades are grass, you know, people say, oh no, it just appears to be having purpose. Listen, you can play semantics with me day and night, but some you're not going to convince me that, that all of this is random. How can it be random when we're sitting here talking to each other and all this kind of rubbish, right? Anyway, where do things come from? And wherever they came from, the things themselves, the universe itself is the greatest scripture of God. I keep saying this, the day and the night are, are, are the, uh, basically the, uh, the pages of the scripture being, being turned by the divine hand, right? So where did everything come from? Why is it so amazing? And then ultimately, you know, who's managing all of it? Like that kid's playing with the ball. As soon as he stops kicking that ball, the ball's gonna stop. So why is everything moving? Hey, Mr. Atheist, with all due respect, I'll have to say there's two kinds of atheists, good atheists and bad atheists. Like atheist, atheist underscore bot, great car, or atheist minus, great guy, or Daniel Dennett, he's a great guy and I'm not just saying that because he follows me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm talking about people who have principles. They're the same as me. I don't care what they call themselves. People who are nice and compassionate people. People who would stop on the, on, the, on the road and feed someone else. If you're a religious person and you don't do that, as far as I'm concerned, you're of the devil. And if you're an atheist and you do do that, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, uh, you're a godly person. So I've gone way over limit. Sweetie, are you ready to get going? Babe, are you ready to get going? All right, let's get going. Uh, we've been parked here way too long. Where's that damn brute of yours? All right, folks, over and out. So if you're uh, in uh, the area, you should definitely, uh, when I say the area, I mean the eastern seaboard, you should definitely come and check Toronto out. You can hear some party grooves coming from somewhere out there. What the hell is it? Oh my God, there's like some kind of event taking place across the water. So downtown is, is basically in that direction. And right in back of this building, I mean, if I panned, in fact, let me walk a little bit. Just bear with me for one more minute. If you're a Toronto person, a lot of people don't like these little homages to Toronto, but what are you gonna do? You kind of fall in love with the place. So as I walk, you'll see the downtown come into view. And yes, you will see CN Tower. So the amazing superstructure or whatnot of George Brown College. There's one of the tallest buildings downtown, which is Scotia Tower. And right next to it, hey, lo and behold, another bank, BMO. You know, in uh, Canada, the big five or six banks own 50 plus percent of the wealth of the country. And uh, in any metropolis, in any town, 
the biggest buildings oh lo and behold there's another one TD right at the top you might be able to even see that right there dear viewer the biggest buildings are always owned by banks and uh, there's something to be said uh, about all of that but as we keep panning and there's CIBC right next to BMO so you've got once again you've got CIBC you've got BMO you've got TD you've got Scotia and you'll be like oh where's Royal Bank well yeah trust me Royal Bank's over there too I can see the logo but you might not be able to see the logo from uh, where you're at dear viewer that's Royal Bank right there the corner through the trees you might not be able to see the logo and I don't know where the other one is what is the other one like there's uh, obviously BMO Scotia TD Royal Bank and CIBC and whatever that's that's enough pardon me you can go inside and there's a washroom right next to the desk sir right inside they're not gonna mind there's no one in here as, as far as I know I don't know I don't know okay thank you sir so there's CN Tower folks a nice friendly Torontonian jogger and uh, that's where I'm gonna leave it um, over and out for now and sorry if I offend anyone it's like the Quran says that people get pissed off just because you talk about God or just about because you talk about principles or just about because you talk about something useful and people don't want to be reminded that they're here and you know time is precious and you know they're accountable for what they do people don't want to feel accountable if you don't think you're accountable then so be it the crown says if you're not accountable or if you're not being controlled then when you're when your soul is leaving your body why don't you return it back into the body if you're if you're not um uh, you know if you're not powerless essentially anyway over and out for now time to grapple with the elements and i'm talking about the wife element and uh then be on our way back to our beautiful Jeep and home sweet home.